Namaskaram. In this video, I shall be talking about the latest guidelines given by the Kidney Diseases Improving Global Outcomes in the year 2024 on the diagnosis and management of nephrotic syndrome in children. But before that, if you are someone who wants to stay updated with the latest, have conceptual clarity, registers better with illustrations, wants a succinct summary, and wants a ready, reliable reckoner, then this channel is certainly for you, where you will find where it is a one-stop solution for all your worries. The current chronic kidney disease nomenclature given by the Kidney Disease Improving Global Outcomes defines chronic kidney disease as abnormalities of kidney structure or function present for more than three months with implications for health. So this actually means that nephrotic syndrome, which continues to persist beyond three months, is also a chronic kidney disease, and it is generally not mentioned. In the, as a cause or as an etiology of CKD in chapters and books, but we must prognosticate the patients accordingly. What stays the same in these guidelines is that nephrotic syndrome is comprises of only two criteria. First is nephrotic range proteinuria, and second is any evidence of hypoalbuminemia, either on lab or clinical, in the form of edema. Nephrotic range proteinuria, on the other hand, means the first morning or a 24-hour urine protein creatinine ratio more than equal to 2 gram per gram or 200 milligram per millimole or nephrotic range proteinuria is more than equal to 3 plus on dipstick. Complete remission is that on more than equal to 3 consecutive occasions. The first morning of 24-hour PCR is less than 0.2 or the dipstick value is negative or trace and partial remission is the first morning or 24-hour urine PCR more than 20 but less than 200. The correlates of urine protein on dipstick are as follows. If the dipstick value is negative, proteinuria is somewhere between 0 to less than 15 mg per deciliter Trace is 15 to less than 30, 1 plus is 30 to less than 100, 2 plus is 100 to less than 200, 3 plus is 300 to less than 1000 and you must see that it is more than equal to 3 plus which is classified as nephrotic range proteinuria and 4 plus on dipstick is more than equal to 1000 mg per deciliter. Steroid sensitive nephrotic syndrome is complete remission with four weeks of prednisone or prednisolone at standard doses. Frequently relapsing nephrotic syndrome is more than equal to two relapses in six months of the first six months of disease diagnosis or onset and more than equal to four relapses in 12 months in any, any subsequent 12 months period. Infrequently relapsing nephrotic syndrome is anything which is less than this frequency Steroid dependent nephrotic syndrome is two consecutive relapses on therapy with either full dose omnicotyl that is steroid or on tapering of steroids or within 15 days of discontinuation of steroids. So my submission here is that if relapse is occurring on full dose corticosteroid then it should actually be categorized as steroid resistant nephrotic syndrome instead of steroid dependent nephrotic syndrome. And let us see what KDCO thinks of it in future. Steroid resistant nephrotic syndrome as per KDCO is lack of complete remission with four weeks of therapy. So four weeks of therapy, you decide whether it is steroid resistant or it is steroid sensitive with daily prednisone therapy at standard doses. An important concept to remember here is that every steroid dependent nephrotic syndrome is frequently relapsing, but the vice versa is not true. For initial treatment, oral steroids can be given for 8 weeks, that is 4 weeks of daily by plus 4 weeks of alternate day or 12 weeks, that is 6 weeks daily plus 6 weeks alternate day. So this is a change which KDGO has come up with. So we can use either 8 weeks regimen or 12 weeks regimen. The dosing schedule however remains the same, that is 60 mg per meter square per day or 2 mg per kg per day maximum 60 mg per day for 4 weeks 
एंड से 40 मिलीग्राम पर मीटर स्क्वायर और 1.5 मिलीग्राम पर के पर डे मैक्सिमम 50 मिलीग्राम पर डे फॉर अनदर फोर वीक्स और द सेम डोजिंग फॉर सिक्स वीक्स रिस्पेक्टिवली सिक्स वीक्स ईच रिस्पेक्टिवली Initial approach for the treatment of relapse continues to stay the same that is oral steroids at a single daily dose of 60 mg per meter square maximum of 60 mg per day until the child remits completely for more than equal to 3 days in steroid sensitive nephrotic syndrome after achieving complete remission the oral steroid is to be reduced to 4 mg per meter square on alternate day for more than equal to 4 weeks so if it is steroid sensitive you continue for more than equal to 4 weeks same same regimen should be employed for frns and sdns patients but especially if they have no steroid toxicity what one must remember that patients should ideally be in remission with glucocorticoids prior to the initiation of glucocorticoid sparing agents Now these agents are, for example, cyclophosphamide, levamisol, MMF, rituximab, or calcineurin inhibitors. So even if you are planning to start any of these drugs, you must ensure that the patient is in remission. You have to achieve remission with steroids itself, so, and co-administration with steroids is recommended for more than equal to two weeks following initiation of steroid sparing treatment. So what does this mean again? That even if the patient shows signs of steroid toxicity. you will have to give steroids until the patient achieves remission and once he has achieved remission you must continue the same for at least more than equal to 2 weeks along with the steroid sparing treatment with a steroid sparing agent recapitulating the treatment algorithm if it is a new onset nephrotic syndrome you must first see if it is age is less than 12 years there is no syndromic feature and the family history is negative In that case you have to start the patient on glucocorticoids for 4 to 6 weeks and if there is no response you must go for genetic testing renal biopsy consider adding calcineurin inhibitors and renin angiotensin aldosterone aldosterone system block it that is tell me certain for example if however there is complete response you must shift the patient to alternate day glucocorticoid therapy for 8 to 12 weeks and If there is infrequent relapse you must consider glucocorticoids in the event of this relapse if there is a frequent relapse you must consider cyclophosphamide levamisol mmf rituximab cni the drugs being preferred in this order itself and if it is steroid dependent then in that case you must prefer these steroid sparing agents in the order of mmf rituximab cni and cyclophosphamide however in a patient with new onset nephrotic syndrome If the age is more than 12 years or syndromic features are present or family history is positive then in that case you must do a biopsy and or genetic testing or consider referral to a specialty center Some important facts to remember about the commonly used steroid sparing agents are that cyclophosphamide should not be started unless remission with glucocorticoids has been achieved as is true for any other drug no two courses of alkylating agent should be given that is only one course is recommended weekly complete blood count should be done to look for leukopenia and overall bone marrow suppression which may prompt dose reduction or cessation for levamisol complete blood counts must be done at least 2 to 3 monthly alt st levels every 3 to 6 months anca titers every 6 months and discontinue levamisol if anca is positive if there is skin rash or agranulocytosis low dose steroids may continue to be given on days not taking levamisol because levamisol is also given on alternate days therapy is to be continued for at least 12 months duration calcineurin inhibitors should be continued for at least 10 12 months again since most children will relapse on discontinuation monitor the drug levels to limit the toxicity and aim for lowest levels to maintain remission and avoid toxicity for calcineurin inhibitors they have a high they have a very narrow therapeutic index so what happens is that the, you have to regularly keep monitoring the levels the two commonly used calcineurin inhibitors are cyclosporin and tegrolimus and you have to monitor the levels initially every 3 weeks and maybe then after 1 to 1 and 1/2 months you have to monitor because if the levels 
if the clinical response is not if the clinical and laboratory response is not there and tac levels are increasing in the blood you will have to consider discontinuation or switching over to an alternate therapy and the same you'll also have to do if in case there is any side effect the most common side effect of calcineurin inhibitors is nephrogenic so cyclosporin is preferred in patients at risk for diabetic complications the target 12 hours trough level is 60 to 150 nanogram per ml or 50 to 125 nanomole per liter and similarly tacrolimus is preferred to cyclosporin their cosmetic side effects are unacceptable the target 12 hour drug target trough levels be being 5 to 10 nanogram per ml or 6 to 12 nanomole certain new doses had definitions have been added by ketigo this year confirmation period is the period between 4 to 6 weeks of daily prednisolone therapy like at the end of 4 weeks you label the patient as steroid resistant or steroid sensitive but at the end of 4 weeks suppose a patient has not achieved complete remission he has achieved only partial remission in that case you give steroid therapy for 2 more weeks and this duration is referred to as confirmation period you will in which you will see the response to further steroid or pulses of iv methylprid or and ras inhibitors because it has already shown some response or partial remission with steroids late responder is someone who has partial remission at 4 weeks but goes into complete remission with 6 weeks of continuous therapy calcineurin inhibitors responsive steroid resistant nephrotic syndrome is partial remission with 6 months of treatment with cni and a complete remission with 12 months at adequate doses and or levels cni resistant srns is absence of even partial remission at 6 months of cni therapy multi drug resistant srns is absence of complete remission with 12 months of treatment with two mechanistically different glucocorticoid sparing action glucocorticoid sparing agents mechanistically different means having different mechanisms of action and secondary srns is a steroid sensitive nephrotic syndrome patient who has shown initial response to steroids but once he relapses he does not achieve remission with steroids again so first time he was steroid sensitive but later he became steroid resistant so these patients are referred to as secondary srns for relapse prevention daily steroids need not be given routinely during episodes of urti in patients with frns or sdns in case they are in the intertreatment period that is when the child is in remission however if the child of frns and sdns is already taking some low dose alternate day steroid then in that case a low dose daily steroid therapy should be given at the onset of urti or infection and the dose will be 0.5 mg per kg per day a word about calcineurin inhibitors is that they may be used od or bid depending on individual formulations in smaller children they can even be used 8 hourly targets for glomerular the target blood levels for glomerular diseases are not known and most clinicians check these levels to verify adherence and avoid cni toxicity that is for up titration and down titration of the dose of cni at present the most reasonable dosing of cni may be to titrate in the individual patient to obtain a desired effect on proteinuria balancing dose escalation against serum creatinine and reduce the dose if serum creatinine increases but does not plateau or increase over 30% of the baseline if the serum creatinine does not fall after dose reduction also cni should be discontinued renal biopsy is indicated if at onset in renal failure not related to hypovolemia with subsequently decreasing renal functions in patients receiving or exposed to cni for prolonged periods so cni therapy should preferably be given for one between 1 to 2 years or even less and not for 2 to 3 years if there is an evident extrarenal cause of proteinuria a renal biopsy may not be warranted and what are the examples of these extrarenal causes lymphoma monoclonal antibody treatment and ulcerative colitis and hiv infection Prognosis is best predicted by a patient's response to initial treatment and the frequency of relapse during the first year after treatment. So to summarize the salient points which KDGO has come up with in the year 2024, new definitions of confirmation period, late responder, CNI responsive and CNI resistant steroid resistant nephrotic syndrome, 
MDR SRNS and secondary SRNS have been added and particular mention is made of CNI responsive and CNI resistant SRNS because with the increasing prevalence of steroid resistant nephrotic syndrome patients we general pediatricians might have to start calcineurin inhibitors in their OPD practice and so they must be aware of the doses therapy and side effects guidelines for the use of steroids during infections has been given like in patients with frns and sdns in case the patient has suffered from infection associated relapse and the patient is not on any therapy with steroids at a particular at that moment when he has that infection in that case you don't need to give profile access but in case the patient is already on alternate steroid therapy you have to you can convert this to daily dose low daily low dose alternate day steroid therapy and the dose is 0.5 mg per kg per day renal biopsy is not required if there is any evident extra renal cause for proteinuria thank you so very much for a very patient listening and watching and if you did like the video i will request you to press the thumbs up icon and uh, press the bell notification and thank you so much once again. Thanks a lot.